Hello and welcome everyone to this week's episode, episode four, in fact, of the Bison broadcast. We appreciate you tuning in. We have several guests with us joining us this evening. We have Mrs. Gadley making her encore performance coming back from last week. Last week she discussed imp things that were impacting the Erie County Tech School. This week she's going to talk a little bit about the Discovery Center and how that impacts all students in 9 through 12. We also have Mrs. Lutzo joining us. She's our 910 counselor. She'll be joining us, talking to us about things specifically for those underclassmen. And we're fortunate to bring in another Bison ambassador. This time we have Junior Hayden Ford. So welcome everyone to this week's episode. I'd like to get started by letting you know that our goal is to reduce the time. I know that we've had so many things to cover, so many topics, so many issues and questions that you folks had that our, our broadcast has been close to 30 minutes. Our goal is to cut that back. We want to make it a little bit more brief, a little bit more concise. So you're going to see that we're going to try and go through things a little quicker and also in the next upcoming weeks, reduce the number of topics. We talked about Mrs. Lutzo joining us, Mrs. Gadley and Hayden Ford. And remember, we'll have another edition of the Senior Spotlight at the conclusion of today's presentation. So please get your senior photos, if you haven't already, your senior photos and information to Mrs. Gadley. And we have her email right there on the screen for you. So please get those in so Mrs. Gadley and Miss Sarah can put those together. We want to celebrate you seniors. And uh, that's one of the things that we're doing to do that. First topic is Keystone exams. I know that's really important for our juniors or for our, um, not for our juniors anymore. We'll let Mrs. Lutzo talk about that, but for our underclassmen. So Mrs. Lutzo, can you give us a little background on where we are with the Keystone exams and where we're going forward? Yes, so information that we've received from the state, um, juniors, our current juniors will not be required to demonstrate proficiency on the Keystone concept areas to qualify for graduation. Um, However, our current ninth and 10th grade students are still required at this point by PDE to demonstrate proficiency on each of the three Keystone Concepts areas to qualify for graduation. Um, starting at the end of the school year and working through the summer and at the start of next school year, we'll be working together to make sure that we're remediating all of the students that were scheduled to take the Keystone exams and getting them rescheduled to take the test again um, in the fall and in the spring of next school year. So the biggest thing I hear you saying, Mrs. Lutzo, is, is we don't want our kids to worry. We don't want to add stress to their life. Mrs. Lutzo, Dr. Wolfram, you guys have a great plan in place. You're ready to go with the Keystones. We've already been communicating with our department leaders and our teachers, and we realize, we've said this before on the Bison broadcast, this whole process of losing so much of this semester, we're going to, it's going to take two, three, four years for our school systems across the country to recover. So don't get worried. Is that right, Mrs. Lutzo? Correct. The next thing that Mrs. Lutzo oversees as the 910 counselor is the transition program. What things do you have in place uh, for those students? So fortunately, before we left um, at the school closure, we were able to complete several activities with um, the current eighth grade students. So we were able to go over to the middle school and work on scheduling presentations with our Bison ambassadors. We were also able to work on the um, eighth grade shadow program where the students came over and ate lunch with us and, and worked at a class period with some of our Bison ambassadors. And we were also able to complete spring orientation with them. So we're really fortunate and really happy that we were able to provide that for them. Um, our next transition program that we have is our fall orientation, which is currently scheduled for August 3rd at seven o'clock in the high school auditorium. And we're really hopeful that we're gonna be able to do that. You know, we'll be, we'll be working with administration, making sure that we're allowed to, um, but we're, we're really hopeful. Absolutely, and I think we've proven that if we can't be together uh, in the auditorium, which is obviously our preference, we hope to all be together, I think we've proven that we'll have something, uh, Mrs. Lutz, so you and I will work together with our team, and we'll make sure that even if, uh, similar to what some of the colleges are doing, we'll have an orientation event that we produce and put out for all of the incoming eighth graders. So you parents of eighth graders, especially if this is your first child coming to the high school, um, don't be alarmed, don't be concerned. We'll make sure that everything's in place. 
Um, Hayden, we'd like to ask you, you know, give us a little background. You, you were the first one in your family to go from our Fort LaBeouf Middle School to our Fort LaBeouf High School. Did you feel prepared? Did you feel ready to go when you made your way as a, as a, as a freshman a couple years ago? Yeah, I really did. Um, I got really nervous over the whole transition. I just got comfortable in the middle school. So I was nervous about that. But the eighth grade shadows with the Bison Ambassadors, that really helped me just walking around the school and eating lunch with an actual high schooler. That was just the coolest thing to me at the time. And it really helped calm my nerves and get me ready for freshman year. Is there any chance that you remember who that senior was? Or junior? Yeah, it was actually Kenny Youngberg. So that was extra cool because I played football. So he was the starting quarterback at the time. So it was just awesome experience. It's funny. I didn't prep you for that question. It just occurred to me. But <laughs> so many times, so many times when I talk to the students that have gone through the program and had a chance to experience shadow days and different things like the spring orientation, they remember those moments. And so it's funny how it's gone full circle. And now you're actually a Bison ambassador helping the next generation of students come through. Yeah, it's awesome. And so speaking of, of the process of going from eighth grade to ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, you're now a junior. You're headed for your senior year. Um, and, uh, you know, what kind of things have you done with regards to scheduling? Um, what kind of classes are you taking now as, a, as, a, as, you're going, as you're finishing up your junior year, you're going into your senior year that pertain specifically to um, your career interests? Yeah, I plan to pursue a degree in sports broadcasting so I've been focused on Mrs. Macell's journalism class um I've took it the last two years and I plan to take it next year for my senior year and she's just been a great mentor it's she's really helped me work on all aspects of sports journalism and communications and I get a chance to just get better at every aspect of that field with her yeah, she is. Uh, Mrs. Macell is outstanding. There's no doubt about that. Mrs. Lutzo, what do you have planned for our students as we're scheduling um, moving forward? Yeah, so we are um, still working on this schedule. Um, it's underway and we're, we're getting it rolling so that we can have it prepared for next school year. Um, we understand that there's some questions around your, your schedule and what that may look like next year. And as always, we will still have our schedule correction days. Um, you know, if, you know, if we're allowed to, uh, those are scheduled for August 11th, 14th and 19th from nine to one in the high school guidance office. Um, our administration is working and looking at all options. Um, obviously it's unclear at this point, but hopefully by the time August rolls around, we'll have some definitive answers. That information will always be posted on the school website, um, or you can email one of us and we'll be able to let you know the answers. Yeah, absolutely. With, with um, Mrs. Lutzo, with so many unknowns out there, um, Mr. Emmerich, our superintendent, Dr. Wolfram, our assistant superintendent, they are monitoring that very closely. They have their their uh, you know their hands on the pulse of that through the Department of Health, through PDE, through the governor's office, and uh, they're they're monitoring that to make sure that we know what is going to be involved for school in the fall with regards to you know, safety precautions and things like that. So we have a lot to talk about once we get into July and August, but a little early for that now. So let's move on. Um, Hayden, also, you know, you mentioned working with Mrs. Masella. Um, there's a lot of programs that Mrs. Gadley has in place through the Center for Post-Secondary and Career Discovery as she's the coordinator of that program. Are there any experiences that you remember having going through that either through your freshman exploration days or through sophomore panel? Are there any experiences that you remember having that uh, were a direct result of this program? Yeah, so the sophomore panel discussion, you choose some, you choose two different like areas for your future, and then you get a ton of panelists and you just ask them questions and they describe what their day to day is and their job. And I met a man named Tim Mello who worked for Erie News, and I got to talk to him because he's big in sports also. And that actually led to me setting up a job shadow with him. And that job shadow was a great experience for me. I actually got a chance to interview Erie Otter player and an Erie uh, Bay Otter player. So that was really awesome, just holding the microphone and talking and being on the news. So it was just a great experience for me. And it wouldn't have happened without the sophomore panel discussion. Yeah, Tim Mills also a Fort LaBeouf graduate. I don't, did you realize that yeah. or did he share that with you? Yeah, I remember yeah, Tim as a, a student. Yep, I remember Tim as a student. He was very excited to get involved 
in our uh, Discovery Center program. Uh, Mrs. Gadley reached out to him and he's, he's had some great contributions. Mrs. Gadley, what are some of the other um, areas or programs that we have in place as we're moving forward? Yeah, so the Discovery Center does just what Hayden was explaining. It aims to provide students with the opportunity to connect their academics and their interests in order to help them find the right fit for a career educational program after graduation. Um, and we do that through a variety of vet events such as the freshman expiration days, sophomore panels, job shadows. Um, we're working on, with a lot of field trips, classroom speakers, and community partnerships to get students the experiences to help them kind of find where they fit after school. We also aim to help meet those PDE requirements for the Future Ready PA Index through those events. And we have each of the students' experiences and reflections on files so they'll count for their career artifacts. Another great resource that parents and students can take advantage of at any time, not just now, is the CPSCD website. And it can be accessed by going to the high school website and clipping, clicking on the CPSCD icon. From there, they're able to explore the six different schools within the Discovery Center. Um, it's a great way to kind of engage that conversation about what your student may be thinking about doing after high school. And then you can explore the different activities that are offered in the high school that they can get involved with watch the exploration presentations with them, see different careers related to those pathways and other resources. Yeah, excellent. Thank you for sharing a little bit of uh, some of the highlights, Mrs. Gadley, of the program and uh, all the things that you're involved in. We're so fortunate. We have so many teachers that serve as school chairs and uh, they're, they really do the uh, so much work you and, and the, the teachers that serve as those school chairs to make that program one of the best in the state. So thank you, Mrs. Gadley, for your leadership in that program. Yes, and we're also going to be offering a new exciting course for the 2021-20 school year um, called Diversified Occupations. And it'll be available for students in the 11th and 12th grade to pursue once they've met all the prerequisites. And once they're enrolled in that class, they'll be able to complete coursework that will prepare them to gain real world work experience during the school day while earning credits towards graduation. So that's something else that we're looking to add and kind of help you know, find their right fit after graduation. So Mrs. Gadley, that's the program that Mr. Shady's running that's similar to the co-op program at the Erie County Tech School that so many of your students are involved in on that campus. But uh, these are students that didn't necessarily get started in the tech program early on and now realize, hey, I'm interested in uh, going to work. There's a lot of family sustaining job or a lot of family sustaining wage jobs available. And uh, you try and you and Mr. Shady work to hook those students up with that, correct? Yes, that is correct. And we're really excited to be able to provide that for our students at Fort LaBeouf. Okay. Anything else, Mrs. Gadley? Just one other thing is, you know, Hayden also mentioned that he got to go on a job shadow, which really helped him solidify that interest. And we feel that those are one of the most valuable experiences students can participate in because they can either show them that this is what they really want to do or they may want to pursue something else. And we want to let all of our students know who may have paperwork in to complete a shadow this semester, not to worry. And we'll be rescheduling and coordinating them um, in the fall when we're allowed to and our administration and the Department of Health and PDE gives us the go. But also, if you have the opportunity to do a shadow um, in a career of your interest now or during the summer through a family friend or a connection, do feel free to do so. And then you can just fill us in when we get back and we'll help count those towards your job shadows. Excellent, yes. Yeah, so students should reach out to you, Mrs. Gadley. I know Mrs. Hynoski is retiring. So parents and students don't hesitate to reach out to Mrs. Gadley with questions about that. Yes. All right, next, uh, I'm going to change gears here a little bit and talk about some of the things that are going on. Uh, Mr. Pizzo and I have spent a lot of time in the building uh, in the last uh, week or so trying to see where students' items are, personal belongings, uh, equipment, things such as that. So the first time that we ran this, we did it just for the essential equipment, whether it was like uh, something, you know, uh, for your, you know, your glasses or your sneakers or something specific that you needed uh, medicine and things like that through Mrs. Brundage or your, your band instrument through Mr. Gilson. This now is anything else that you have left in the building. You've checked most of the lockers. Most of them are empty. But if you have things in your locker or in your gym locker or one of your athletic team lockers, if you have any items that you're interested in, um, please make sure you reach out to Mrs. Montgomery. There's her email. And then on Thursday, May 14th, 
Uh, Mr. Pizzo will set you up. Mrs. Montgomery and Mr. Pizzo will set you up with appointments and we'll make your way up here to collect those items. So anything that you have left in the building, let us know. Um, we're not going to, there's no reason we checked a, like I say, we've checked over a dozen lockers. Everyone is empty. I know that students at Fort LaBeouf for some reason don't utilize their lockers very much and that's fine. That's personal prerogative. But what we'd like you to do is uh, we're not going to be able to schedule a time due to social distancing. So we want anything that's left in the building that you have, please reach out to us and we'll get those items to you. A couple neat things that are going on. Uh, athletic Director Bob Barton and uh, Assistant Athletic Director Gary Dawn. Um, Assistant Athletic Director Don Andrews have been working hard to still recognize our seniors. We talked last week about getting some information out about our boys volleyball team. I hope everyone got to see that on our high school Facebook, uh, out on the website as well. Um, there's also released on the Pride of the Bison Twitter. And uh, this last uh, week, we released a couple more sports. We released our baseball. So congratulations, senior scholar athletes. Uh, all of those boys, uh, Ethan, Hunter, Joel, Zach, and Corey, congratulations on your career. Thank you for all that you contributed to Fort LaBeouf and how you represented Fort LaBeouf. We're very proud of you. Uh, we were so sad. It breaks our heart that you didn't get to complete your journey. Same with our farewell to our United or Unified Track and Field seniors, Aiden and uh, Cameron. Congratulations to you folks and all that you have given and contributed to Fort LaBeouf. Couple more year end events, commencement. Yes, it will happen. We've been in working with our class of 2020 committee um, we have made proposals to the Department of Health. We've had a couple things that were shot down, unfortunately. Um, we really, really, we had seen, many of you had sent um, emails and stories of the Air Force graduation that occurred out in Colorado. So there was a model for us to follow. Mr. Emmerich, Dr. Wolfram worked very hard communicating with those organizations, the Department of Health and the state attempting to get permission for us to do a similar format on our Carbonito field. We were very excited about it. We had a lot of things in place, but unfortunately that has been shot down due to health concerns. So that is not going to happen. Um, that was our favorite choice. We were very excited. And in re re reaching out to students and talking with students, they were excited about it. So we're really disappointed that's not gonna work. We're working with the Kiwanis Club, um, the local Kiwanis Club, the local foundation, a lot of things going on. Um, we ask that you please, please make sure that you keep reaching out to your class president, Gabriella Cook. Um, Gabby is part of the class of 2020 committee. We're meeting every week. We're talking about the situation. We're talking about the circumstances. We're trying to put something very memorable and dignified together for you seniors. You've earned it. You deserve it. We want to experience it with you. Um, speaking of that, we distributed cap and gowns yesterday and the yard sign from the FLB Foundation for you to proudly display. I know some of you had purchased an earlier version, so you have two. You can put one in the front of the house or one in the back, or you can put them both, both up front if you'd like. We want to celebrate you. Make sure that you get your cap and gown picture. Um, with your cap and gown, seniors, you received a small half sheet of orange piece of paper with some notes on there about getting us a picture of you with your cap and gown, a, uh, a waist from your waist up shot of you, head and shoulder shot with uh, your... your uh, your tassel on the right-hand side. We need that photo of you with your cap and gown dressed up nicely. We need that by the end of the week. Um, we just met today with uh, Mrs. Uvegis, Mrs. Humphreys, Mr. Gerard. He's helping us out because he's pretty knowledgeable in those areas. So we need that photo. So please get that sent to us. A couple things that we're very excited about. We just wanna, we wanna throw a shout out. We have uh, our autism virtual walk. This is something that Fort LaBeouf takes a lot of pride in. We have a great, great team that's K through 12. Um, that's very involved. The 19th annual uh, Walk for Autism has been rescheduled for Saturday, June 6th. So that's right around the corner, right after graduation. And it will be virtual. Visit the website or the Facebook page um, to register or donate to the event. Be sure to join uh, part of our, our Bison Strong team. In addition, you can also participate in the walk by taking a selfie or a family photo. We have some great photos here included on this slide. So please join Jake. Caden, Connor, and Garrett, and so many other of our wonderful students. I miss you guys. Um, we, we want to be part of that and show our support. So uh, please, if you've already been involved also, maybe you've already ordered some Bison Strong apparel. 
Um, that's going to be distributed very soon. It was sold back in February. It's been delivered. So arrangements are being made. So they're going to reach out to you and make arrangements to allow you to pick up your Bison Strong Apparel. If you have any questions, you see that um, website at the bottom of the page there. Uh, put that into your computer, Chromebook, phone, and reach out and support our, our wonderful students. Speaking of our wonderful students, we have some great senior spotlights. I'm going to ask uh, the ladies, uh, Mrs. Gadley and Mrs. Lutzo, to help me with these. And uh, these are some students that are graduating from Fort LaBeouf, class of 2020. Mrs. Gadley, if you could do the honors. Yes, I can. First, we have Donnie Wurst, who's studying for his CDL and plans to continue the Wurst family business. Rachel, Rachel Kimmy, she'll be attending Penn State Barron School of Nursing in the fall. Genevieve Feltmire will be attending Allegheny College and majoring in bio, pre-med, and minoring in psychology. Nicole Ennerlein, she'll be attending Clarion University for nursing. And Ben Perry will be attending Edinburgh University in the fall to pursue a teaching degree in health and physical education. Yeah, uh, I see Ben has his football jacket or his, his athletic jacket on there with his football pin. Uh, yeah. Hayden, I believe that you might have opened up some holes for uh, Ben this last year uh, as uh, one of our stalwart offensive linemen. I believe Ben had just under 1,000 yards, and as a team, we rushed for uh, well over 2,000. So, uh, Ben and uh, Hayden, congratulations. And Ms. Lutzo, we already included these slides in a previous Bison broadcast, but we just wanted to recycle them. Um, there's some important information here, Mrs. Lutzo. Yeah, we just want to encourage everyone again to go on the um, School Counseling Google Classroom page. Um, we have scheduling, academic, and emotional support links there. Um, you can always email one of us if you're struggling also, or if, have, if you have any questions. Yeah, and also if you need work permits or transcripts, those things come up from time to time. Um, please uh, email the ladies. Mrs. McGuire is available for work permits. She can make appointments. And uh, Mrs. Landis, same thing with transcripts. How about just overall, Mrs. Lutzo? Um, this is such a, a lonely time, although the weather's a little nicer and there's been some progress made in our state. I think a lot of people are still feeling, you know, from the quarantine and from just the overall loneliness. Um, any thoughts on that, Mrs. Lutzo? Yeah, we just want to remind everyone that you're not alone. And if you or someone you know are, is struggling, there are tons of resources out there and people that we can connect you with. Um, you can see those resources listed on the slide. Uh, you can always go on the School Counseling Google Classroom page, and I believe it's also on the school website. Um, if you're not sure where to reach out or what, what resource to reach out to, please email one of us. Um, myself, Mrs. Gadley, or Mrs. Uvegis, and we'll find the right resource for you. Excellent. Thank you. Mrs. Lutzo. Also, guys, um, we put this every week. We want to hear from you, so please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, there's a link there that you can put questions in to any of us, and uh, we will forward them if you need them forwarded, but uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, we want to make sure that you know that uh, that we, want to, that, that we want to answer any questions you might have. So thank you for your support. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all that you're doing right now as you're serving as mom, as you're serving as dad, you're serving as an employee, you're serving as a teacher, you're serving as a guidance counselor. I know parents, you're doing so many different roles and uh, so many things that are different than what you've had in the past. So thank you for everything that you're doing for our students. We're very proud of them. Uh, this is uh, next week's broadcast. You see it right there. will be available next Wednesday the 13th, somewhere around 9.30. Uh, Mrs. Lutzo, any um, thoughts before we close up? Nope, just that I miss everyone and hang in there and stay safe. Hayden, uh, any uh, words of wisdom uh, to your classmates, peers, before we uh, sign off? I think Hayden I think got kicked off. I might have some technical difficulties. Okay, well, um, <laughs> thank you, Hayden, for that contribution. I appreciate that. Um, Hayden did a great job today. He really did. You yeah. can see that he's a bit of a natural as he's moving towards the sports media and sports broadcasting. Um, you know, I think that uh, that's a great field for him. He does a wonderful job with our hoof print and our journalism. He also has a bison podcast that he puts out on athletics. So uh, Hayden's uh, really doing a great job. And then how about Mrs. Gadley? Anything uh, before we sign off? Just want to say thank you for everyone for being patient with us. And we all miss you and we're here to support you. So reach out if you need anything. 
Thanks, ladies. Thanks, Hayden, for joining us. Uh, everyone, have a great day. Have a great week.